Hello, dumpsterinos, frugalistas, and prepperonis. Yes, preppers, that's you, prepperonis. This video is for you. This is about sprouts and microgreens. Hear me out. Now, would be preppers. Something you need to keep in mind is that someday, even though you have all your canned foods and your nine thousand jugs of water and so forth you might come to the point where you need to grow your own food so of course part of your prepping hoard that you keep locked up would be seeds right because you you might need to grow your own food someday or you might be a person on a budget a person who might like to eat healthier a person who might like to have some sprouts on a salad. Do you know how expensive fresh organic sprouts are? Did you know you can grow them yourself? You can get seeds on food stamps. If you can afford to divert some of your grocery budget, two or three dollars, to buy a few seeds, because here's the thing. Well, one, of course, you might want to grow your own sprouts, obviously, or microgreens. Or you're prepping, but if you're kind of thinking of oh, someday I might need these seeds, I might need to know how to grow this stuff, like practice now for fun. It's like a science experiment. It's so much fun and it's so easy. It, this is great for people who want to grow their food, but maybe don't have a yard. Maybe don't even have a balcony to put a potted tomato on. You don't need a lot of sunlight to do this. In fact, in the beginning, you don't need any sunlight at all. It's just once the little plants start growing, then if you want them to green up before you eat them, then you need a little sunlight. You just pop them in a window. Anyway, I am no expert, let me tell you, on microgreens and sprouts. I just, I know what I do and I grow lots of different kinds because, and most of the time I can't even keep track of what's what in a jar, but I figure, well, whatever, I'm growing them to eat them. So whatever I put in there, I, I don't know. The sprouted lentils I always recognize. Lentils I have done a lot with. And the thing is, you know, a lot of times when you'll watch people's sprouting videos, you'll see the whole jar just full, like a jungle. And I don't know if I'm just not putting enough seeds in to begin with, or I kind of harvest as I go along a lot of the times. Like they may not, they may not get that much further because I, I eat them quickly. Anyway, I'll show you some seeds I have going. Basically what you do is you get your seeds, whatever kind, peas broccoli, radishes, sugar snap peas, lentils, kale, arugula, what, you know, seeds. And you soak them in your jar overnight or during the day. Like if you start at seven in the morning, then you can drain them at seven at night. If you, you know, start at night, then you drain them in the morning. And then after that, you continue to rinse and drain twice a day. And then they start to grow in your little glass jar. And then you can pop them in the window. Now, here's the thing. People who do this a lot and do it commercially, you'll see on their videos, they'll have, well, they use mason jars a lot, but they'll have like special lids that have kind of a screen or a sieve kind of thing. So they can just pour the water in and dump it out. But you look online and just those lids are like $7 each. I'm not going to pay $7 for some kind of screeny lid, nor am I going to buy really anything other than seeds. I'm just using stuff I have as well you can imagine because I'm just not going to pay for stuff like that. So I just, you know, when I have to rinse these, I just put water in and I just pour it through a, you know, a kitchen strainer and that's that. I just don't think you necessarily have to have all the, the stuff that's specifically for growing um, sprouts and microgreens. Now, a lot of people who grow microgreens have these big trays, you know, big growing trays. They're basically a shallow tray with dirt. I mean, but big ones, big ones, big ones. Like a big, you know, I don't know, whatever, big ones. So, and they put a little layer of dirt in and then they put a ton of seeds on top like I did. I think this is broccoli. I'm not incredibly certain because I don't incredibly remember. But I wanted to try this several different ways. I've been experimenting. It's fun. It's science. I've done a lot in the jars and not as much this way, but I mean, this one turned out pretty well. And the funny thing is, you know, it's, it's time to harvest these. But if I was really trying to grow these to grow broccoli, like I, I probably wouldn't get one seed to sprout. But I mean, look at them all crowded in there. It's pretty amazing. Let's just go take a quick look at 
what I've got going already. But remember, all you have to do, soak your seeds, drain your seeds, rinse your seeds twice a day, drain the water out. Don't let them stay too wet, you know, after that initial soaking, because you don't want them to get moldy. They can grow mold. You got to be careful about that. If they start to smell kind of weird and funky, I probably would discard. If they kind of smell like grass and kind of taste like grass, I think you're going in the right direction. So first I'll show you what I have going. Everybody should know how to grow their own food. Did I mention how good for you sprouts are? These guys are so nutritious. These little sproutlings and microgreens have such compact, intense nutrition compared to their full grown ancestors. And they are crunchy. That's one thing I like about them because I like the crunch added to my salad. I don't know, they all kind of taste the same to me, except I did do leeks and I was rinsing them and draining them the other day and I gave them a sniff and it smelled oniony in there. And I was like, oh my goodness, the leeks are just not gonna taste like mown grass like everybody else does. I mean, they, I'm kidding, they don't taste bad, but it's not like, well, I don't know. I guess some people would just sit here eating a bunch of sprouts out of the jar. I mean, I could, I have eaten them that way, but I think I prefer them in a salad. This is like an alien. Look at those. I think these were mung beans, but I can't even remember now. And see that? It's a little plant. It's got its little root system going on and leaves and all sorts of stuff happening. Maybe I let this plant go too long because look right there. That's like the first little leaves that come right out of the seed. And now we've already got, I should, we've already got some real leaves here. I should plant this in the yard, except it would die because when I try to grow them in the yard, everything dies. This is such a good project with children to show them how these seeds sprout. I've also done it on paper towel, like just keeping the paper towel moist and having seeds on top or having the seeds sandwiched in between two moist layers of paper towel. We're trying all sorts of things. I think it's very educational, very interesting. And when we do get into warmer weather, I, I think I am gonna start some seedlings this way. And what that just happened? Oh, I think part of this, I think the old, I think the old, uh, the old seed structure just dropped off. Anyway, I think I will sprout some seeds this way and try planting them in the garden and see what will happen. Because for example, with some things like lentils or adzuki beans or, or the da, 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 um, or mung beans, I don't know what those plants look like. I know what lentils look like when you eat them. I have no idea what a lentil plant looks like. I think it would just be really interesting. So anyway, now let's take a quick look at my little seed projects. Chia, chia, chia. We've got the Chia Pet Hedgehog. He was on sale. Actually, it's a she. She was on sale at Walmart. We have some bare spots in the back, but we're learning. So you might be wondering why her fur is so flat across the top. Are you wondering that? Because it is. It's because I had this dome on her because she likes it in there and it keeps it nice and warm and moist. But her fur is touching the top of the dome. That's why it kind of happened overnight. So anyway, dome is off so she can grow. And it was so funny. Frugal Daddy was saying the other day, like, oh, my God, that's so amazing. Like, wouldn't it be cool if you, you know, could grow something on there that you could eat? Wouldn't it be? And I was all like, we are going to eat those. Those are chia sprouts. Like, we're sprouters, Daddy. We are going to eat them. So I'm going to let it grow a little bit more just to see. See, there's a, there's a hole in the top. There's a hole in the top of your chia that you pour water into in case you never had one. I never had one before. Frugal Daddy never had one growing up. If I'd known you could eat the chia seeds when I was a kid, I would have been all over it. And when you do chia seeds, when chia seeds get wet, as you probably know, they make kind of a, a, a gooey gel paste, which is what you want for smearing on your chia pet because it kind of has to stick. And that's sort of the problem I had in the back a little bit because I think I had it mine too watery and it was really hard to get the seeds to kind of stick to the back because they kept sliding off. So anyway, I have another little dish I'll show you. Hold on, we'll be back, Hedgie. All right, so I just started these seeds soaking because this is gonna be the Chia Pet's next iteration and the Chia seeds have kind of sunk to the bottom but I put other seeds in there too. There's kale, I think kale, arugula. So I thought for the next go around with the hedgehog, we would have a mixture of seeds. And 
I'm thinking these other types of seeds. Maybe I have alfalfa in there too. I can't remember. I only did it like three minutes ago. Why would I remember? But once the chia forms its paste, then I feel like all these other seeds, oops, I just poured them into the sink. Well done. I think all these other seeds will adhere as well. And then we'll kind of have like a mixed salad going on top of the hedgehog. And of course now, yes, I have to scoop up all the seeds I just spilled. Now, in terms of my sprouting situation, we have a lot going on here. And although I used to sprout a lot a few years ago before the pandemic, and I think I even made a video about it back then, I am no sprouting expert. I'm just experimenting and doing all sorts of different things. So the basic method I prefer is seeds in a jar, fill with water, either do it in the morning and then rinse them in the evening or do them at night and then you rinse them off in the morning. You let them sit in the water for about 12 hours. Then once you drain the water, um, you rinse them off two or three times a day. Like you run water on them and then strain them again. Those are peas. I think these are peas, sweet peas. So they're soaking in the uh, giant fahe tub. When and if these sprout, they're going to have to go into glass because they're going to need some light. But for the moment, for the soaking, I think they can be in anything. So we have kale, arugula, alfalfa, broccoli, sunflowers. I also have all of these seeds that have already started to sprout, but they're not totally at the point of necessarily needing sunlight. I mean, that could because it's got some little green leaves. These are still just shooting out their little root thingies, but they'll go in a sunny window pretty soon in a day or two so they can, um, you know, start their little greenery going on. Now we're in our dining room window and I have all these big pots of dirt because I was trying to save plants from last summer, which the cats killed. So anyway, now these big pots of, big pots? Anyway, now these big pots of dirt are my holding sprout area so they can get some sun. So besides doing them in a jar, you can do them in a little tray of dirt. Now, obviously I didn't want to invest money in anything. So, I mean, I had to buy the seeds, but I didn't buy jars or anything. I'm just kind of working with what I have. So this little tray is just obviously from takeout from like, I don't know, Thai food a million years ago. So I put a small amount of dirt in there and I thought I was growing alfalfa in here, but again, I don't remember kind of looks like broccoli. I don't remember. But these are probably ready to harvest soon. And what you'll see with the real sprout experts, when they do it in dirt like this, look here, show you. i show you. Look at that. Um, what, what the sprout experts will do is they'll, when it's time to harvest this, they'll take scissors and trim it. Trim, trim, trim. And anyway, I think that my alfalfa did, or whatever this is, did a lot better in the tray than in the jar. I think some things do a little bit better in the dirt and some things do great in the jar. And I prefer the jar because it's sort of easier. And well, then again, this was pretty easy too. I don't know. Then I have these two. No, just step on it. I mean, that's like totally okay. Just dump it on the floor. So you say to yourself, there's not, not that much going on in these two. Well, because the cat, not necessarily that cat, but this cat is a representative of all cats, knocked both of these off the kitchen counter onto the floor. And so I basically just gathered up the dirt and seeds as I could and plopped them back in and just kind of hoped for the best. So that's why this one doesn't look too terribly full. With this one, they've shot out their little root thingies and they need to start, you know, getting some green leaves. Now here we have the jar method. I'm gonna drain the water out. I eat these every day. So if I need some, I take them even if, and I need them, even if they probably should grow some more. But those are looking pretty good. So even though I am using dirt for some of these, this is basically a way of growing your own food without needing a garden. What's in here, you ask? I wanna say those are nasturtium seeds. Nasturtiums are a flower, but apparently you can eat the sprouts. We've got more of those in there. More lentils. I do lentils a lot. And lentils sprout really easily and they grow pretty fast. And I'm talking about like an old bag of little tiny dried lentils in the back of the pantry, been there forever, and they sprout. These ones are looking good. These I think are mung beans, I think. And they're green, you know, when they're a little bean slash seed. And then as the seed inside absorbs water and starts to grow and sprout and it expands as it absorbs water, it splits that outer shell off. And then that's why you see the little white 
things growing out of little white beans and then you have these green things split and coming off you know what i mean look at them whatever they may be i mean in the winter you're getting fresh greens and these have a lot of protein all these sprouts and microgreens packed with protein and nutrients then of course we have our growing of kitchen scraps and these were dumpster onions little green spring onions and basically after i cut off the tops and used them i put the bottoms the little rooty part in a little dish of water for a while and the roots started to grow and the plants started to grow and then i put them in dirt and they're growing and so when i need some spring onions for a salad i just come over and cut some off this is all in my dining room window this is my begonia from the summer that i've been keeping alive she had a bunch of flowers i think they just fell off but she's very healthy and happy more planted kitchen scraps now these were my these were my first two romaine lettuces that i was growing from the little bottom bit and they were doing extremely well so i planted them in those big pots of dirt over in the other dining room window that we were just looking at and the cats sat on these and dug them up and ruined them. So I moved them into these smaller pots. Uh, these pots are from a dumpster, but the little plants in them died long ago. Um, and I, these are still alive. They're gonna come back, but the cats really did a job on them. And then there's this one that I just transplanted today. So you can see how it grows up from the center. Basically all you do is you have your romaine lettuce, you cut off all the leaves you want, leave the roots at the bottom, all right, this one I just planted, so I'll just go ahead and show you. I'm sorry to disturb you. We don't generally do this to plants. So it, the new growth comes out of the middle. So basically, you've just cut off your romaine leaves to use. You give a fresh cut to the bottom. Get, put it in a little dish of water for a while. See if it's growing. And then transplant it into dirt before sitting in water starts to just rot all the leaves, which eventually... It will do, and keep the stuff away from your cats. This is the front living room window, which gets lots of light, but it is north facing. So we've got this poinsettia that's doing very well. This lettuce growing like mad. My poinsettia tree is growing up there. And then we've got more of our kitchen scrap garden, more lettuce and more spring onions. All right, it's actually a few days later and I'm about to have an amazing salad made entirely with dumpster ingredients. We've got the dumpster lettuce, carrots, cucumbers, gorgeous avocados, tomatoes, but not that much lettuce. It's a little skimpy by my standards of eating enormous quantities. So I think it's time to harvest some of those sprouts and microgreens and, you know, bulk up my salad a little bit. Let's get harvesting. All right, here we go with the salad. Let's put on some lentil sprouts. I think they taste kind of peppery, but that's what I think lentils taste like. And we'll put on some of the mung bean sprouts, a whole bunch of those. This is going to be a very sprouty salad. As I said before, I think these are broccoli microgreens, but I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. So we're just going to trim a few and add them to the salad, hopefully with a minimal amount of dirt. I mean, it seems like, like, like these, 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 they just kind of, like, I feel like I could wash that dirt right off. I'm going to try that. Hold on. Here, you guys come with me. There we go. I think I managed to rinse most of the dirt off. It wasn't quite as easy to, as I had anticipated, but we got those sprouts on there too probably easier to cut them. It's just these are so delicate. They just kind of pull right out. Also, don't let me forget, it's time to harvest the chia pet. And yes, in case you're wondering, I am the kind of person who goes out gathering dandelions in the early spring to make free salad. I don't know. I've never eaten chia sprouts like this. I mean, they have these weird little roots and everything, but hey, whatever. Let's just throw it all on. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> I'm sure these aren't going to kill me. I'm mostly sure. That's a lot of sprouts on one salad. Oh, she wasn't kidding, was she? She just went right crazy with all the sprouts on that salad. That's maybe more than a person needs. There, wow. 
God, you guys are so jealous, aren't you? Isn't it cool how it just covered up all the other yummy stuff underneath? All right, I'm going to have so much nutrition coursing through my veins. Did I mention there's a lot of protein in sprouts? So vegans, you probably already knew that, or vegetarians, anybody who wants more protein and doesn't necessarily want an animal source for it, always. Why? Boom, sproutage. Yeah, baby. All right, Dumpsterinos, Frugalistas, and Pepperonis, thank you for watching. I hope you all try growing some little baby seedlings and microgreens in an old mason jar or a old Chinese food takeout container. It's time for lunch. Let's try a big old bite of mixed sprouts and greens. I have no dressing on here yet. I mean, this is just like Mm, oh my goodness, are they ever delicious? I feel like something extremely healthy is going on inside my mouth that I've never quite experienced on this level before. I'm definitely a fan of salad dressing for sure, which I'm going to put on here right now, but... You know, these are expensive in the stores. Like, it's expensive to buy sprouts. People are into this stuff. It's really good for you. Good for preppers. Good for people on a budget. Good for people who want to learn to grow some of their own food, but maybe don't have the space for a garden or even a balcony. Good for survivalists. Good for everybody. All right, now that my chia sprouts have been harvested, before we go, I thought I'll apply another layer of seeds to my little chia hedgehog. What you do generally when you get your chia pet, you can use them forever and ever and ever, as long as you got seeds. You soak it for a while and then it has a hole in it. Um, you put water in every day after the first couple of days. Because first we have to apply this gelatinous mess and then it has to dry a couple of days. And then I believe it's on day three that we put water in the hole. Now the thing was, first time I did it, I just kept kind of slopping this on. And of course gravity pulls it downward a little bit. And I had a lot of seeds that kept falling off into the little tray. You need a little tray under your chia pet because it, it drips water out little by little during the course of a day. Um, so what I wanna do is put a little bit on at a time and let them dry a little bit and then maybe turn it on its side to you know, get its flanks done because I just don't need these seeds running off constantly. If I could get a thin enough layer, then they might not sort of flow downward, but anyway, that's what we're doing with sprouts and seedlings. This is the first chia pet I've ever had. Chia, chia, chia. See y'all again soon, I hope, for another episode of Diving in the Dumpster. For free food and glory. Can you say thanks for watching?